Hi humans, Walter Jackson here from the Five Jacksons Journey. This week we're camping in rural Alabama near a place called Double Springs. And because we love camping so much, I thought this week I'll make a video about uh, the different types of camping we've done around the world. We spent eight years living in Europe where we camped quite a bit. And we camped from childhood uh, in South Africa. And now we are living full time in an RV. So if you're interested in learning more about camping in Europe, versus camping in South Africa or camping in the US. Stick around and we will show you how we've done it. Camping in Africa is all about getting out of the crowded cities most of us live in and getting out into nature. We all love visiting the national parks to see the animals. An African sunrise and sunset is something to behold. Most of our camping trips would be single destination trips. The winter is the best time to go to our national parks in the north, where the weather is great and lack of foliage makes it easier to spot the animals. In the summer, we all love to camp in the south and west coasts near the beach. South Africa has some of the most beautiful beaches in the whole world. Our gear in campsites are primitive compared to the US. Uh, for instance, we don't have any fifth wheels because we don't have any big pickup trucks to tow it. A Ford Ranger would be one of the biggest truck sizes in South Africa. As a kid, our family uh, used a Nissan Champ Bucky with a small trailer to put the tents in. It was one of the smallest trucks ever made in the, in the world. We sat in the back on travel days, something that's still legal even today. When I was a teenager, my parents upgraded to a Ford Ranchero truck and a caravan. I just love that, uh, the look of that truck. And I spent many holidays camping in Africa with my family. It's what started my love of the being outdoors. And it's why I still camp today with my family. Hundreds of thousands of people visit South Africa every year and many people camp in the national parks. If you stay close to the ranges and act with precaution, the only danger would be the animals. So don't leave anything out that would attract predators. You don't want to end up and wake up like these people. In Europe, we camped to see all the amazing sights. It's such a diverse continent with natural beauty and so much history and culture. It's also much safer from criminals and predators, so you can go nearly anywhere in Europe with a tent. You can easily travel between countries, so making multiple stops is much more convenient. We lived in England for eight years and did over 70 trips to mainland Europe. Our longest camping trip lasted several months. We lived in tents full-time with our infant boys aged three and one. During this time, we drove over 10,000 miles from England to Greece and back, stopping in 21 countries along the way. Our setup was about as basic as you can get. I turned an old Volkswagen estate into an RV by adding a roof box and bike rack. With such a small setup, we could basically go anywhere we wanted into cities or up mountain tops. Or when we felt like it, we parked the RV at an airport and flew out to some of the amazing islands like Greece, Malta and Cyprus. Campsites were as basic as South Africa with no sewage or water hookups. You have electric hookups and it would normally be 16 amp connection with a 220 volt uh, line. Flying to Europe and buying a tent could be an alternative to the overhyped Contiki tour so many people go on. I can't recommend camping in Europe enough. Just do it. You'll have a great time. The US uh, is unique in the way that it's set up for camping and RVing across the whole country. There are thousands of campsites in national, state and county parks as well as private camp campgrounds. There's also thousands and thousands of miles of open road that you can go and explore with amazing scenery. Uh, the price is as diverse as hotels. You can camp for free on government land, usually for 14 days at a time. And this type of camping without hookups, it's called dry camping or boondocking. On the other side of the spectrum, you get RV resorts that offer luxury amenities, entertainment and full cups for 50 amp power. You've got sewerage and water. Some sites even have cable TV and internet cables. I've added these examples of sites at Disney's Fort Wilderness in Orlando and a more primitive site in rural Alabama. 
but both have full hookups. The equipment is also insane in the US. You have everything from tents to travel trailers, class C, B and A RVs, and something that's unique to the US called a fifth wheel. It's basically a massive caravan that hitches onto the truck bed. You can buy a decent used travel trailer from about $10,000 all the way up to a 45-foot diesel pusher worth a million dollars or more. I will discuss the differences between these uh, RVs in another video because it's important to choose the right one for your needs. Uh, the national, state and county parks usually have older facilities, so the hookups might only offer 30 amps or less. But because of the convenience of the, these big RVs and the low cost of camping, many people choose to live on the road full time like we do. It's very easy to fly in from Europe or anywhere and just rent an RV. You don't even need a special license to drive these things on the road. Just get over here, pick a part of the country and get behind the wheel. I hope this introduction gets you, video gets you excited about camping in different parts of the world. And join us next week for some more RV related videos.